Here we are in sunny, beautiful Seattle, Washington, and we're in my backyard. Look at this, look at this. We've got two nuts behind me. One of them looks like this, and one of them looks like this. Obviously, the problem's over here, and we need to use 3D modeling and 3D printing to fix it. So this looks like this, and we're gonna do it all right here on 3D Printing Nerd. The nets behind me are bow nets. These are seven foot by seven foot nets that a lot of softball and baseball teams use to hit and throw balls against. That way you're not chasing home runs hit into your neighbor's yard. The nets are cool because they allow you to stand really close, hit the ball into it, and then they have this section right here that collects the balls. The problem is when something breaks on it, then you have a net that isn't fully functional and that's an issue. The design of the nets is actually fairly simple. You have these metal bases that act as the floor of the net and keep it on the ground. And then the net slides over these poles on the side. And then at the tops, a little rope from each side of the net actually hang on to this little, well, this is a metal grabby thingy. That's the technical term for it. It's right up there. The problem, as you can see, this net is missing the patented little metal grabby thing at the top here. This problem is actually a great use case for 3D modeling and 3D printing. Normally what you would do is contact the manufacturer and be like, hey, I've got this pole. It's missing the metal thing at the end like the other pole. I need a new one. The manufacturer would say, oh, okay, it costs a jillion dollars and we will send one to you. But in this case, we have 3D printers, we have 3D modeling software. What we can do is measure that one, recreate it in a, in a 3D model and then 3D print it and hopefully attach it right here and test it out. That's the goal. We've got one with and one without, and we're gonna measure the one with to make one for the one without. Let's get to it. In an effort to speed things up, I'm not gonna bore you with the measuring stuff. Essentially, you know how to do this. You take calipers and you measure things, and then you write down the numbers it gives you on a piece of paper, much like that. So here is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this drawing right here and we're gonna go into SolidWorks X Design. We're gonna recreate it. We're gonna export ourselves an STL file. Then we're gonna print it. We're gonna find out if 3D printing can solve this problem. Let's go. Hey, look, here we are inside of X Design from SolidWorks. This is a pretty simple web interface. Let's just get started. Uh, I'm gonna select this plane to work on. I'm gonna hit this button to start a sketch. And there it is. I'm going to use this tool right here to create the general shape. You remember we have this, right? We have this. So I just need to create that shape and then I can use constraints to make it the proper dimensions. So uh, let's see, I believe it's like this. I think it went over kind of kind of like that and then like that. Huh, there we go. We have our shape. Now, according to this, we need to add some constraints. Uh, I'm gonna hit escape. What I'm also gonna do, I'm gonna fix two lines and that way the design grows or shrinks from those and those stay fixed in space. So I'm gonna click right here and I'm gonna hit this anchor and that fixes it. And then I'm gonna click up here and hit that anchor and that fixes it as well. So why don't we go ahead and dimension these? The top one is 10 millimeters. I'm gonna click that and type 10, hit enter. I'm gonna go over here. Let's see, this is 15. This one is 5.5. And now this one dimensioned is five. This one here, uh, the original design actually has it kind of long, but if you look on my sheet of paper, I decided to shorten it up. So I'm gonna call it 20, easy. This line here is 6.3 because the diameter of the shaft it has to go on to is 12.7. And since we're going to use revolve like this, we're gonna create the 3D shape, then it has to be half of the diameter of the cylinder. <laughs> That's it. That's our shape. That's great. I'm gonna go up here. I'm gonna click the check mark because that makes my sketch final. Now at the bottom, I'm on sketch. I believe I can go to features and there's this, which is revolve. So I'm gonna click that brings up this interface. Okay, so add, and I want it to be solid. Okay, select the revolve axis. It's gonna be this one right here. Select the profiles. I believe instead of selecting each one of these individual, I can just select this. Okay, gives me kind of a preview, a full revolve, and I'm gonna hit the check mark. Hey, hey. not too shabby. 
not too shabby. To make it printable though, what I wanna do, I'm gonna add a chamfer up here. This way, I don't have to put supports between this. So I believe I can go right here. This is a fillet, so now I can click, click chamfer. I'm gonna click, uh, let's see, I'm gonna click right there and right there. There we go. And I want symmetric. Okay, the distance seems to be a little bit too far because I can't, I can't bring it out too far. So it looks like five. I know there's probably calculations. There we go, 5.47. I'm gonna hit this check mark up there. That creates the chamfer for us, great. You know what I could do? I could add a little fillet right at the top. So let's uh, select those, fillet, and I think 0 0.5, that's what I typically do. Bam, there we go. Uh, you know what I might do? I might add a fillet right here just because that little curve should give it a little bit of strength. That's it. We have our part. Let's go print it out. For a print like this, I'm choosing four perimeters. Top and bottom layers don't really matter, but I'm also doing 50% infill on this. And I'm choosing four perimeters and 50% infill because it needs to be strong. We're just using PLA plastic. And while it is strong enough, adding perimeters and adding infill will help just increase the strength and make sure it withstands the test of time. Look at that, we've got our part, here it is. Here it is, right here, there's the poles. We don't need this one right now. It's a bit of a tight fit, it's a really tight fit. So what I'm gonna do is use this hammer and if it breaks, then we know it was never meant to be. But if it holds on for dear life, then we have a chance. Stop, hammer time. Dang it. Good thing I printed two. Hammer time. There we go. So you can see that this one is a little shorter. It's on there pretty good. It's not going anywhere. The little chamfer right here might work, I guess. Only one way to find out. Look at that. Look at that. That's great. It's holding it up. It's actually holding it up just like the other one. Let me go get a bat and a few balls, and let's put it to the test. I can hit the ball hard, but I know someone that can hit the ball harder. You ready? Let's do this. Wow, did you see that? My wife, Mickey, just nailed it. Just, just awesome hits right into that net, and it proved that the 3D printed part could hold onto the net enough to make it work. And what's great is now we have two functioning bow nets and the softball team that she manages and the softball team that my daughter is on can use these once again. You know, just it's, it's crazy to think that specialized sports equipment usually costs a lot of money. These bow nets are no exception to the rule. And to go to the company to buy another part to fix that would have cost a serious amount of money, more than what I spent on plastic and modeling. That is fantastic. I'd love to hear your stories. If you have specialized equipment that you fixed thanks to 3D modeling and 3D printing, I'd love to hear about it in the comments down below. A big thanks to everybody that made it this far in the video. You are awesome. Subscribe if you're not and ring that bell just in case. Beyond all that, don't forget to hug each other more because I love you guys. As always, high five. <laughs>